All right, so I went ahead and refreshed my paintbrushes and a new piece of paper towel and refreshed a bunch of the colors on my palette after I played around to try and figure out what I liked and what I didn't like. So one of the things I will say is that it is not a bad idea to use something to mix up your paint that isn't your paintbrush. Traditionally, a palette knife or something like that. I'm just gonna use my paintbrush for this demonstration because I'm not sure that you'll have something else. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna make some traditional scenic, we're gonna do traditional scenic painting techniques for some of this. And we're gonna make a stone, a brick, a scumble, a marble, and a wood, and I'm going to talk to you about the, the general techniques. And some of them are what we would call a combination of wet on wet or wet on dry. So you don't want to try and just go at this and paint it all wet on wet or a la prima. You don't want to just try to do one whole layer and get it done with because it can be very complicated and it won't look like what you want it to look like. One of the most common wet on wet techniques, however, is a scumble, which we've already done for priming. And one of the big things I wanna point out is that you don't just want to pick a color straight from the tube. So one of the advantages of having, uh, just using your primaries is that you have to mix this color. So if you're making a wall or a background color and you want it to be green, this is a pretty garish straight green. You don't really want it to be green. So I can take this green and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this over here so that I can mix a new color for it. And I'm gonna add some blue, make it a deeper, darker green. I like that. And I'm gonna take some white, I'm gonna mix that in, make it a lighter green. And I actually kinda of wanna make it more aqua. So I'm gonna add some ultramarine. And that, ends up making it a little bit more army green. I don't particularly like that. So let's grab the phthalo blue instead. And that is gonna make it more aqua colored, more rich and watery feeling, more teal than it is gonna make it feel grass green. So I'm gonna grab some more white again, add that to it. And I'm just playing around with this color, but I want to keep moving in the direction that I want to until it's a color I like. I like that one, but I need more white. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my white. Not the white I was using because it's not open. I'm going to grab this white. They're both acrylic, just one I haven't finished the tube yet, so I do prefer, whenever possible, to finish to finish a tube before I start with another one. Now, instead of dipping straight into here, as you can see, when I dip into a color, it gets contaminated, so I'm gonna put it over in this contaminated white section, if you will, and I'm gonna continue to pull from my contaminated white instead of trying to grab from the fresh white. So I'm going to make this nice aqua green, add some more blue to it, and I'm just going to keep playing with this color until I get it the way I want it to look. Great. So I like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to just apply this color. I'm going to apply this color. And I'm also going to grab this contaminated white and I'll apply that with it. And by wiggling my brush side to side, I'm going to end up making this X motion and blending these on the surface. And that will give my wall a, consider a considerable amount of interest. And I want to try and keep it interesting because we want our work to be interesting. But I want to have it have a variety on the wall because most walls are not actually completely flat. So if I'm doing just a plain flat scumble, this might be the base for something else. 
it might be a wall texture. This side is going to be a scumble texture or a wall step texture. But this side, we're going to do the base to stone. So to do that, I'm going to do the, I'm going to work back to front. So I'm going to make a grout color for that stone. So instead of using green, I'm going to come in here and take some brown, and I'm going to come in here and take some white. And I really don't mind that the green got in there. And I think that this is a little too red. I'm going to put a little yellow in there, let it get a little bit taupey. And yeah, that looks lovely. So I'm going to once again scumble that with a little bit of this dirty white. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm trying to pick up some of that green and get some of that in there in the background. So now I'm able to combine almost three colors, the white, the brown, the taupey brown I've made, and the green. Let me get some of that green in. Just to give it kind of a background texture and give it a lot more variety of color and that'll make the grout of my stone much nicer. Okay, while that side dries, I'm gonna switch over to brick. And this time I'm gonna use a bunch of reds. Hmm. Instead of doing brick, let's do marble, because I think I wanna do marble with this green color, just because I like it. So I'm gonna take, I'm actually gonna take this and scoop some out and make another color. It's even bluer and lighter. I'll try and make sure I mix all this in. And I'm gonna start to mix together the base color of my marble and when I do that I want to keep the directionality of marble in mind and that's what I'm doing here with the with the wet strokes going in this direction but I'm actually using the brush there's white on this brush so I'm going to use this one using it to stipple and I'm blending doing a wet blend but I'm blending wetly in a very textural manner. I want the I want the colors to appear separately. I want them to stand out from one another. But I don't want them so I don't want them to completely blend, but I don't want it to be smooth. And I don't I want it to feel like rock or stone. So I'm going to start with this kind of blended layer. So mixing your colors together or laying down a color always looks more interesting with more than one color on the bottom. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. And you want to get your first coat as something that will already be giving us an idea of what will come later. So this marble, for example, I want to really give it that texture and bring it to a place where it's going to help me later on and give me something to start with. I'm going to begin my texture. Having, again, more than one color is super useful. So now I'm going to do brick. And for this I'm going to do red, but I don't have a red that's really useful. So I'm going to take this crimson and come over here. And I'm going to tone this red down. And I'm actually going to take green and tone it down with green. And this will knock the saturation of this down just a little bit. Ooh, that made it quite purple. That particular green made that particular red quite purple. So let's try the other red. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to grab this green and I'm going to knock it down. There we go. So now it feels very, it does still feel a little purple, but it's very brick red. And I'm going to take this orangey red and combine it with some, some gold, some of the more golden yellow. 
And this time, the pattern I'm trying to make, I can do a scumble. I want it to feel very regional. I want these colors to occur in blobs and I want them to feel very horizontal because the brick itself will end up feeling very horizontal. So I want that to occur naturally in this direction. So I'm going to try and get my brush in that orientation. I want my brush to feel like those strokes are going in that direction. And I want to change color very quickly, very tightly. I'm even going to take a little bit of that color and put it right there. I want to try and get some of my brush strokes to go away. I'm going to lay that brick down like a soul. Excellent. Now, now that I've done those four, I'm going to do a wood grain texture as well. So on the top here is where I'm going to do my wood grain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the bottom with a ketchup and mustard mixture. And I want this to be bright. I want this to be really, really bright. So I'm going to take a little bit of red straight from the tube. And I'm going to take the golden yellow. And I'm going to mix it. And I'm going to let this be very, very bright. And I want to work in the direction my grain is eventually going to go in. And I want to make this bright and luminous, because most wood feels bright and luminous from the bottom side. With most model painting, you're going to have to be very careful not to get paint on something you don't want paint on. So painting on this cube, a little complicated, but it's very similar to actual scenic painting or actual painting painting. All right. So for our wall side, our scumble side, one of the things we'll do is we'll also put texture on this. So we'll use spatter as a texture on many different um, things in scenic painting, but a wall in particular, we can use it. So if I decide I think this is a little dark, I wish it were a little lighter, I'm going to take this light whitish color and I'm going to water it down so that it's nice and transparent. And I'm going to load it up on the toothbrush and I'm going to spatter on that wall. And this will give me a nice texture. Now this is also a great texture for brick. And marble. It's a little light for the marble. So I'm going to grab some of this blue. And that'll add just a little bit of texture in there. And now I'm going to come over to here. And on the stone, this is the this is going to be the kind of the grout work between the stone. And so I want, I actually want that spatter to be a darker color. So I am going to take a little black and a little brown. Load that up on my toothbrush. and get that color on there. While that's drying, I'm going to turn back around to my wall. And when, if you look at any wall that is around your house, you'll notice that on the top edges and the bottom edges, it gets a little bit darker. So I'm going to take that same brown spatter and I'm going to do kind of a halo spatter, so a vignette or something like that, just around the edge of this item so that it feels darker in the corners and feels a little bit more like a wall. Now, if you want, whoop, that 
that is a little too much for me. I'm going to take this dry brush and dab that off. But um, if you want, one of the things you can pay attention to is want to take some of the really harsh dots off so that they don't, as I turn it, move. Just don't want it to move too much when I turn the cube. Just waiting for it to dry might not be as advantageous. But uh, the spatter really helps to add contrast and depth and just like any scenic painting item can give you a lot more interest on pretty much any texture you're looking at. Okay, So I'm going to let those sides dry for just a second and then I'm going to show you some in scale. You can spatter, you can do scumble, but another thing we do pretty often in scenic painting, in not in scale but in full scale, is use graining tools and one of the tools that's very useful for that is a fan brush. If you don't have, have a fan brush, you can use a square tip brush uh, or a flat brush and be very careful. But what I'll do is I'll grab this and I'll palette this brush, which means I'm gonna push and wiggle. I'm gonna get those bristles to separate and I'm gonna try and get them to separate on purpose and be as far apart as I can get them so that they do what I want them to do. And then I'm gonna take that dark color and go ahead and stroke down and make that wood grain apparent. So if I want some specialty grain, I can come in and do it this way and get some of the specialty fingering and flaming techniques on the stronger grain. I can also take a little round brush or a detailed brush and come in and do the same. I like to anchor my pinky I'm trying to get some sort of accurate line. And I also try and use, so this gave me a very sharp line right here. So I'm going to use some of that line. And this has a little bit of flexibility for a little while. You can actually pull a little bit of it up or move it around. So I can erase some of that harsh line if I want to. So I'm going to let that grain dry. By now my stone should be pretty dry. The spatter all the way around. So here I'm going to mix up kind of a, a gray. So I'm going to come into this blue and I'm going to add some of this red. So I've got a kind of a warm red going on here. Some green in there. Now our background's kind of, our background is kind of warm. It's got a little green in it, but the gray I mixed is kind of warm. So I'm going to try and go for something a little cooler in the gray family. This blue is looking a little too straight up blue. So I'm going to come in and add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red, which is essentially orange and that'll pull it more toward the center of the color range, so I get this kind of purpley gray. And now I'm going to come in and add stones that I want. Sometimes in scale, it can be a little difficult to add stones individually like this, because it's your stones themselves are very small. But in scenic painting, one of the techniques of doing stone is generally either to do your grout and lay your stones out on top of that, like this, or to lay your stone texture out and then lay your grout out on top, which is how we're going to be doing the brick. So we'll do that on the brick palette. I'm going to come in and add a little bit more of a different color. So I'm going to grab some of this green and mix it with this brown. 
And what I'm trying to do is get just a second color. It's too dark. I want something else along with this, along with this purpley gray in these stones because the stones with just one color don't read super well. And I want to be able to start getting an impression of light as I'm working these down. So I want each application to be more than just flat color. It'll help me later on with having to do less layers and getting more interest each time I do a section. So I'm going to make this next one a little bit bigger. As you can see, doing scale stones could, can get pretty tedious as you're looking at adding these across. Come in with a slightly darker color. I have a lot of paint on that brush and I don't necessarily want to get rid of that paint. I'm going to use it in a second. But I can't really blend it without with that much paint on. So I'm going to come in before this dries and get that other color blended out and then keep going. I want to switch over because I don't want it to dry in the meantime. And it dries, this acrylic dries pretty quickly. So using that second brush to blend can be real helpful. My cat says hi. And he wants to say hi even more. Alright, so this one over here does this. Set another stone up here. Just kind of lay them out. Uh -huh. One of the things with a stone wall when you're laying the stones themselves out that you want to keep in mind is that bigger stones tend to be on the bottom and smaller stones on the top. And the higher up and the, the lower in the wall you go, the more stable each of those stones will be because they are the foundation of the wall. And the higher you get, you can get away with more of the weird, strange rocks and weird configurations. You want, as you lay in these colors, to continue to be consistent, however, about where your light source is coming from. So for me, right now, I have this upper right-hand corner as my, my light source. And so as I add all these little stone-feeling bits of texture, I want to make sure that I'm leaving them up into that corner. This extra piece of paper, if I'm not testing colors on it, can also help me control the paint in my brush. If I'm pulling some paint off the surface, I can have somewhere to put it as well. So having a variety of tools to help you control the paint in your brush can be quite useful. Now, once I lay this in, it is drying nice and quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and take several of the, the colors I just used and add them back in in a spatter or a spray as lightly as I can. And that will create interest in each individual stone as well. So I'm gonna let that dry rinse out my 
tools from that particular project, that particular side. And move on to, I think this side is pretty much done. Uh, if I wanted to lighten it up or add more texture, I could do different things. But at the moment, it looks pretty good. This side over here, I want to go ahead and add veining to my marble. So I have a couple choices. I can make this veining, veining this kind of dark blue color. So I'm not sure if I want to do a light veining or dark veining. So a light veining I would do, so I'm going to do both, I think. So I'm going to take this white and in here and then make it a nice blue color and see how that looks. And I don't think that quite has enough contrast. So I'm actually going to take this phthalo and I'm going to make it a much darker kind of deep blue color and I'm going to add a little bit of this brown dark color to make it this kind of rich but not so overpowering color and then come in and I want it to go quite across the same way and again I'm using my pinky to stabilize my hand and I'm trying to come in and emphasize the sections I've already made with contrasting colors. So the veins often occur when it, the stone cracks and then sediment of different colors sit on either side. So the separation in color that you have on your, on your piece already will help you determine where you want to set your veins. You can also research is a great thing to use to look at these textures. So I'm going to do quite a bit of veining there. And then I'm going to come in with water. And I don't want this to look quite so deliberate and exact. So I'm going to come in and pull one side of that vein with water. And I need to do this before it completely dries. And I will i don't mind too much if it, if it pulls some of it up or changes the way that the the vein looks too considerably. It is a bit watery and a bit messy, so I don't want to leave it there too long. I want to be careful not to let it pool too much. So if I want to also do the light cracks, I'm going to come in with this white move it off the side and grab some of this rich blue again. And I don't want that blue to be too electric to overpower the white, but I don't want the white to end up being too white. So I'm going to come in and add a little bit more here. That's not showing up. So I'm going to do some kind of hairline cracks the other way. These lighter veins aren't really showing up with a little blue in them, so I'm going to come back in and grab some straight right white. And just do a couple of those. I do feel like I have quite enough veining on this unit as it is, but. If I just follow some of these blue ones as a highlight, I think it'll help out. All right, so pretty satisfied with my marble side. My stone is looking pretty good. I want to come in on my brick, and I want to draw some lines. And now one of the things I want to do is go ahead and grab an actual triangle or something that I can use to make real bricks in the size that I actually want to make them. So I can absolutely use a uh, brush to make 
my grout lines. And I want to in a model. And I could also use not a brush, but I'm going to use a brush to, to make the first couple strokes and show you what that looks like. I need to make a gray though because my gray my gray over here is pretty much dried out. So I want to make kind of this greenish gray. Adding a little green to this gray will help set it off and make it a little contrasting to the red of the brick. So I'm going to mix that in real well. Lighten it up. Now, because I have so much paint inside this brush I just mixed it with, it's going to be a little difficult for me to use this brush to draw the line that I want to draw. There's just too much in it. So I'm going to rinse it out, dry it off, and now I'll be able to have a much more controllable line even with just this brush. Even though this brush is a larger circle than what you might think you would use, it's quite useful. Okay. This is going to give me a nice thin line, and I can use that straight edge to give me a perfectly straight line. Now if you use a straight edge you want to make sure you're using one that has a little dip in it so that you're not getting the paint directly underneath that edge. The other thing you can do if you want to be a little bit more precise or a little bit more dry with your uh, more like drawing and less like painting with your brush is you can go ahead and load it up on a uh, dip pen and now it's a little bit easier to draw a straight line with the same width and texture that feels very straight and very perfect and again this will work much better if you actually do use a straight edge rather than and measure it out rather than freehanding it as I'm doing right here. But that will help to straighten out those textures. So if you do freehand, I recommend that you draw a line or something to follow because it can get very easy to get off that line. But you can get a bit more of the organic feel of the side of a brick by doing it by hand and with a, with a brush instead of the pen. So it all depends on the age of the brick and the exact style of the thing that you are looking to paint. Nice and easy. So when I'm going to do my upward strokes, I'm going to go ahead and just skip every other line. And as you can see, I lightened it quite a bit before um, coming in here, but that was also to try and get it to be a bit more opaque of a color, because if I do that, then it will be a little less transparent. And that will help it feel like it is covering in one coat. come back and kind of rough up the edges of this brick a little. And 
Now, I think that this one right here got a little too far in, so I'm going to come up and, while it's still wet, just push that acrylic out, which you absolutely can do. You can manipulate it a little bit with water while it's still wet, but once it's dry, you won't be able to manipulate it at all. So you want to take the opportunity while these are still wet to fix any mistakes that you see. And that's why I'm hesitant to use a bunch of colors at the same time or do a bunch of steps at the same time. So we'll let that dry. And the top up here, one of the advantages of acrylic is that it is shiny. So it finish, its finish texture is very um, nice and, and liquidy and, and shiny. So as you can see, it's got a lot of shine to it. So our wood is gonna look like wood really easily. So I'm just gonna take a brown wash and go over it and knock that color, our original color down just a little bit, but that ketchup and mustard, those bright colors underneath will give us a very nice base. So I'm going to let that dry, and if I need to do it again, I'll just do it again. And the more layers I put in there, the nicer it will end up looking. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to grab kind of that shadowy blue color, and I'm going to shadow right underneath these stones so that there's some depth to it. And I'm also noticing that as this dries, it's drying a lot darker than when we painted it the first time. So these stones are a little hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and add kind of a texture of white, like these stones have a bit of cut texture to them. I'm going to do that all the way across. This is a little bit like highlight, a little bit like pulling that texture back in. Too much. Too much. All right. I need to control the amount of paint on that brush a little better. And sometimes having less control is better. So I'm gonna to switch to a bigger brush. This will allow me to distribute texture without getting quite as nitpicky about it. It'll also allow me to distribute that texture quite a bit faster, as you can see. And that, all of those factors help when you're looking at, at painting, because it's not about each fussy little moment. It's about the overall impression that you get when you look at that piece. So this is getting a little bit nicer. And then I'm going to come back and try and do that shadow thing again. Clean the light out of my brush. Come back in with this dark blue and just try and get a little bit of shadow underneath each of these as a wash and that'll color the grout just a little bit, color the edge of the brick just or the, the stone just a little bit and really pop them out from the background. While that dries I'm going to come back over here to my brick and I'm essentially going to do the same thing over here um, just with each individual stone. I'm going to try and make sure my paint is very transparent so that the shadow will be subtle and gentle and not really visually striking. Um, you do want enough contrast that you can see it, you just don't want to overpower the shape of the brick. So as I add the shadow in each individual spot, I'm actually not being super careful to paint just on the edge of the brick. I want it to go into the grout just a little bit 
because if you do that, it'll look like the, the brick is popping out of that shadow. You also want to keep in mind that after you put the grout on, it can be very clean looking, and you may want to do another spatter just with some color that you have hanging around to give that grout just enough depth that it doesn't look like it was purely painted on top. I'm going to come back in with a highlight and do a similar thing. I'm just going to mark a little spot or two with highlight where the light would hit the brick. I'm going to stop because that spatter I just did is getting muddy with my highlight. So I'm going to let that dry and come back. But acrylic's going to dry pretty quickly, especially on the small surface. And so let's check our wood grain up top. And one, I think it could use another run of brown. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and grab my brown. And two, I think it could be a little bluer. Makes it a little darker. A little more like mahogany, or a little more like walnut, a little less like the light, light wood. So I'm going to tone it down just a little bit in a different direction. So I can change the kind of wood this is as well. So once again, we're going to wait and see what that looks like when it's dry. And one of the dangers is when you wash something several times, you can lose some of the detail in it. So I'll go ahead and bring, especially since we just darkened it, that may we may lose quite a bit of our grain, so I'm going to pop that back up. That didn't take very long, so I think that my spatter is dry enough that I can highlight my bricks. Technically, you don't have to highlight all of them, and I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not highlighting them in clean lines. I'm just skipping across the top of that surface. Yep. So here's some brick, some plain wall, some stone, some marble, and now as this starts to dry, going to go ahead, take a little bit of black, and mix it with this dark brown, and just reinforce some of the, the grain lines that were going on underneath it before it was so rudely interrupted by being washed over. And now instead of just leaving them as lines, I'm going to take my toothbrush and I'm going to blend them into the direction of the grain that they were going in. And what this will do, will it'll just spread out that look just a little bit. You want to be careful. I was a little impatient there and I waited, I didn't wait long enough for the glaze to be dry. So I picked it up in just this one little spot. So I'm going to add a little bit back in there since it's still wet on my palette too. And I'm going to just carefully try and fix that mistake. Hmm. Might be better to wait. But that is our main scenic painting textures. And although we do quite a bit of uh, demoing those textures in uh, wet blending or blending two colors together or doing two things together, generally the more layers you put on it, it'll look good. And you have to get very comfortable with it not looking very good for a while before it looks good, just like any painting. If you want to correct something or change something or add something, you can continue to do that after it's dry or you can repaint something entirely if you want to come in and add some distressing or something to this brick so that it feels a little bit older or mildewy or moldy. 
you can do that as well. You can change the color of pieces of it to make some pieces more yellow with washes and layers and just continue to add to your piece until it looks the way you'd like it to look. Those are your basic scenic painting textures and the basic textures that you'll use on your walls. But any research image that you find, you can use the same painting techniques to finish up painting your model.